In this video, what I'm going to be doing is walking you through how to read a PE study, uh, and I'm going to be going over both the radiographic and clinical implications of PEs. For more educational resources like our HP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So before we actually go into how to read a PE study and how to go over the CT anatomy of it, we have to have a basic understanding just from a pictorial aspect of what our pulmonary artery system looks like. So here you're going to see similar diagrams like this. Um, I'll show you another one of how I learned the pulmonary artery anatomy and we're going to kind of compare it and contrast. But essentially what you're going to have is you're going to have your main pulmonary artery going into your right and left branches and then you're going to have many different tributaries that are going to go off and branch into the upper, the middle, and the lower lobe on the right, and you're going to have the similar type thing in the upper, the lingualer, which is kind of the equivalent of the right middle lobe, and then you're going to have the left lower lobe. And so there's many different branches. What you'll see here when we talk about segmental versus subsegmental, you're going to have a segmental branch, and whenever that branch is again, that's going to be considered our subsegmental branch. So this is the way that I was taught, and it's a much more simplified version of the above diagram. And it's just good to have a, a general overview because in reality, the anatomy is so variable for the pulmonary arteries that you just kind of want to have a framework because when there's a, a big PE that kind of blocks off an entire segmental artery, you want to know that how many arteries to look in each segment. That way you can kind of check them off the list. Okay, there's no large occlusion because sometimes you're just not see your anterior upper branch and that could mean that there's some type of PE that's blocking it right at that bifurcation. So it's good to just have a general uh, framework for these. Essentially I'm going to compare between right and left and this is a simple way. Right upper, right middle, right lower lobe, left upper, left the lingular, and then also the left lower. So the first thing is you're going to have three branches, three segmental branches in your right upper lobe, apical, posterior, anterior. You're going to have two in your middle, lateral, medial, and you're going to have five down in your right lower lobe, superior, anterior, lateral, posterior, medial. I'm going to contrast that to the left side, which is actually more similar than different. So we're still going to have an anterior in both situations, but instead of having two separate posterior and apical bran segmental branches, you're going to now have an apical posterior, right? Eventually, it's going to branch into an apical and posterior subsegmental branch, but the segmental branch is going to be an apical posterior. The left uh, lingular, it's really just the same thing. It's instead of medial lateral, it's going to be superior and inferior, and so that's really just a semantic thing. Down in the lower lobe, it's also going to be very similar and oftentimes it's going to look identical to the right lower, but the convention is going to be instead of having a separate anterior and medial branch off of uh, segmental arteries, you're just going to have an anterior medial and again, then you'll have an anterior subsegmental and a medial subsegmental. You'll still have the posterior and lateral. And this is just if you were to look down on the barrel of a pulmonary artery, this is kind of how it would generally look like. If we were to cut it in the axial plane, the anterior is going to go kind of up more towards the upper right, the medial is going to go towards the upper left, lateral is going to go down to the right, and posterior is going to go down to the left. And again, even though I'm saying up and to the right, it's still all within the right lower lobe. So it's still in the lower lobe. The next thing that we're going to talk about is just the radiographic description of these PEs. If you've probably seen, if you've ever read a report, we talk about segmental, we talk about subsegmental, and then less frequently we talk about saddle, main, and low bar pulmonary arteries. But that's not to say that these don't happen. So what I've grouped it down is based off of both proximity in central uh, location and then kind of going farther out as we go from saddle to subsegmental. And also this would be more severe, right? Because you can imagine the more central these PEs are, the more likely they're going to be causing some type of problems and ca causing strain on the rest of the body. So saddle is going to be like what it sounds, it's right at the bifurcation of the right and left. Then you're going to have your main and your low bar. Uh, your low bar is going to be right here. Your main is going to be um, like your right uh, main pulmonary and left main pulmonary. Technically, it's not actually called your right main and your left main. It's actually just called your right 
pulmonary artery and your left pulmonary artery because you do have a main pulmonary artery which is a combination of the two but for simplicity's sake let's just call it the right main artery and then low bar then from there you're going to have the branches into the segmental and like i said before as soon as they branch again then you're going to have subsegmental branches so this could be your upper apical segmental branch and then it branches again and so that's going to be your subsegmental branches and then they can further branch again but those don't really matter even subsegmental some people don't even treat them um, sometimes they just only treat segmental it kind of depends on the patient and kind of their underlying condition here's an example of a saddle pe so it's going to be kind of just draped over the bifurcation right this is our main pulmonary artery this is our right and left so it kind of just goes over to the side. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that these are our lobar arteries as well. So this is not just a saddle, it's also a lobar artery and probably there's going to be some degree of segmental and subsegmental which we do not see. The next example is going to be a, a I guess a fairly typical presentation for a segmental PE and then if it would be out here after another branch this would be considered a subsegmental PE. So we talk about it in radiology in terms of location because that's what we see but clinicians talk about it in terms of massive versus submassive they still may talk about it as as well in terms of location uh, but they're really talking about the clinical implication because ultimately what matters is the degree of it based off of the overall clinical picture what type of management you'll need to do you're not going to really care if it's going to be in you know the right upper branch it doesn't really matter to them you're still going to get the same treatment for the most part unless you have some type of intervention uh, with IR so massive is going to be, you know, hypotension or they need some type of pressure support. A submassive is going to be no hypotension, but they still have um, some degree of RV dysfunction um, or necrosis, myocardial um, damage, essentially. So when we talk about right heart strain or when we talk about complications of these PEs, what do we actually mean? So right heart strain, typically it's, you know, it's going to be either diagnosed on echo or it's going to be diagnosed on CT and really what it has to do with, it has to do with the strain that is put on the right side of the heart. So in general, the left ventricle should always be bigger than the right ventricle because the left ventricle has to pump blood to the rest of the body. So whenever the RV is bigger than the LV, then that's when you might think, oh, is there some type of right heart strain? The other thing that you might see is whether or not the interventricular septum, typically it kind of bows over from the over to the right. And I'll show you an example in a second. If that ever bows towards the left ventricle, then you would also kind of postulate whether or not there's right heart strain. The other less specific things are going to be the main pulmonary artery to uh, ascending aorta ratio. If that's also bigger than one to one, uh, meaning the main pulmonary artery is bigger than the ascending aorta, then that's when you can consider right heart strain. And then a very non-specific finding is extravasation of contrast into the hepatic vein. So it went down to the IVC and then went into the hepatic veins. Again, that can be seen in many situations, so it's very non-specific, but just something to consider. And this is not a marker of right heart strain, but it's a complication of um, kind of more further down as things progress, you can have uh, infarction of the lung. So now that we have a very broad overview of the both the radiographic description and clinical description of PEs, we can, we can talk about it in the setting of a CT and how I read these. So before we get started, a little bit of anatomy review. So this is our left ventricle going into our aorta. So that's our aorta right there, ascending and going down into our descending thoracic aorta. This is going to be our right ventricle going into our main pulmonary artery, going into our right branch and our left branch. Here would be, a, if there's a PE here, this would be our low bar. Then here would be a segmental and then now going into subsegmental. So whenever you have another branch after the segmental branches, that's going to be a subsegmental branch. So what I was talking about before was you know, any the LV should typically be bigger than the RV because it has to pump blood to the rest of the body. And the interventricular septum typically will kind of bow more towards uh, the right side because it's just more muscular. And the pressure is higher in the left ventricle than in the right ventricle. Whenever the pressure builds up, then you're going to have the right ventricle have more pressure and it's going to kind of push the interventricular septum towards the left, uh, the radiographic left. And then that's going to cause this to also be bigger and also kind of cause the interventricular septum to bulge over. 
Same thing goes with the pulmonary artery. In a typical setting, ascending aorta should be a little bit bigger than the main pulmonary artery. So whenever this starts to get bigger than the other one, that's when you would consider, oh, is there some degree of right heart strain? I caution you that these are really in a specific context, right? It's when you have a PE because you can have, you know, pretty big main pulmonary artery where you would be thinking about pulmonary hypertension, but you're not going to be saying for everybody who has a, a larger pulmonary artery that that's going to be an indication of right heart strain. It's really in the setting of PE. So next what I'm going to do is when I go through these PE studies, really all you're doing is just kind of going through all the different branches and then trying to go through as many subsegmental branches as you can follow to all the way to the periphery because some of these can be pretty distal. So what we're going to do is we're going to start and just by going by lobes. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to do the upper lobe. So this is going to be our right um, upper lobe. Uh, we're going to go branching into our apical branch here. We're going to follow that all the way. And there's going to have multiple branches going into subsegmental branches. Then we're going to have our posterior down here. And it's going to branch a number of times before going to the periphery. So next thing, I'm going to go back to uh, the low bar um, portion, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow them back again, because what we're trying to look for is our third branch, which is going to be our anterior branch, and that's this guy here. So there may be some variation in terms of anatomy, uh, but that's grossly how it's going to look. The good news on this next one is the middle lobe. So there's a middle lobe consolidation, so there's a pneumonia here. And it's a good example of, well, what if you can't figure out where exactly the, you know, the branches are going? The best way to do it is to follow the arteries that are in that lobe and following them backwards. So here we have two branches, this guy and this guy. Both we know are securely within the middle lobe, so we know these have to be either our lateral or medial. And really, it, you know, it's pretty obvious this is going to be our lateral, this is going to be our medial, uh, because that's just the location of where they are. So we follow them back, we follow them back, and in, uh, indeed they are pulmonary arteries. You often find that you may mix them up with pulmonary veins, and really the only way to resolve that, if I gave you one slice, you're probably not going to be able to figure out, but all you have to do is just follow them back. The last one that we're going to do on the right side is going to be our lower lobe. So the first branch of our lower lobe is going to be our superior segment, and that was that guy right there. So this one came off first, and that's going to be our superior segment. Then I'm going to start back at this top. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow these. And so here we should have four branches. Remember I said one should go a little bit towards right, towards the upper, towards the right, one towards the left and the upper, one down to the right, one down to the left. And so that's what we see right here. So here we have our anterior branch going that way. And we, it's already branched a few times into our subsegmental. And then here we have our medial branch. So that's that guy right there. Down below, we're going to have our lateral and posterior branches. And so you see our lateral going that way. And it branched a few times already. And then we're going to have our posterior branch going here. And it's branched a few times. So you just want to try to follow it as best as you can to the periphery. You're not going to be able to do that in every situation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left side. So here what I have is um, I have a few branches that are coming off for the upper lobe. So here we have uh, what's probably going to be our anterior branch. So this is going to be our anterior branch. Then next we have a branch here which is fairly large and one branches more towards the apices and then one branches more posteriorly right so this guy if we follow this one it's going more posteriorly so that's probably going to be our apical posterior and I say probably because you know again there's so much variability in anatomy that uh, we kind of just want to make sure that they're all there but it may not necessarily be the exact one so you just kind of have to follow uh, where roughly they're going. Are they going towards the anterior uh, portion of the upper lobe? Are they going to the posterior? Are they going to the apex? And that can kind of give you a nomenclature to it. So now we're going to try to find the lingular branch. So here we have, we see here we have two branches right there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm scrolling up. So here I'm scrolling up and this one's going up. So that's probably our superior branch. And then this one I'm scrolling down and that's our inferior branch. And you see it's, it's branched quite a few times already. So really what you have to do is kind of continue to follow it and then, okay, it branched here and here, let me continue to follow until it goes to the end. Same thing with, with this branch of there. Okay, so that's kind of what our lingual branch looks like.
Here, it's going to be fairly similar to our right side. First branch that's going to come off is going to be our superior. So that was that guy that just came off right there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to find the rest of our branches in terms of we're looking for anterior medial that come off together, and then we're going to be looking for a posterior and lateral. So probably what that's going to look like is we kind of have two segments right here. So this is going to be our anterior medial. This is going to be our anterior branch. This will be our subsegmental anterior branch, and this would be our medial subsegmental branch. So that has uh, branched off a few times. And then down below, we're going to have our posterior and are going to have our lateral. So that was our, our posterior, and it kind of branched, so that may also be our lateral as well. But we'll see if we can find a second lateral. And so maybe this guy right here is our lateral branch, kind of going more towards the lateral rather than just a straight posterior. So that's going to be probably our lateral branch, and this is going to be our posterior branch. So you can see the, the, the main thing, if I were to, like let's say I'll take this, this vessel right here, and I'll follow it back, and I'm, I'm wondering, where is that going? Where is that going? So this is actually an artery. And what I wanted to do was try to find a vein to show you. Let's take this one, for example. Let's follow it back, follow it back, follow it back. Continue to follow it. And eventually, it's uh, dumping in into the uh, right atrium. So now I'm going to show you the left side. And really, it's going to be fairly similar to the right side. I'm going to start off kind of scrolling down. And here, once I see a branch, I'm going to go up. And so this is going to be our anterior branch right here. So we see this guy right here kind of branches off twice. That's going to be our anterior branch. And then when I start from the beginning, I'm going to go scroll back up again. We have this branch that's coming off. One that's going more posterior. And then when I go back and I follow that going up again, so I'm going up, up, up. That's going to go towards the apex. So that's going to be our uh, apical posterior segmental branch. The next one that I'm going to show you is the lingular branch. And there's two arteries that come off um, in the region of the lingula and kind of heading towards the lingula. So that's going to be this guy right here and then also this guy right here. The way that you figure out which one's superior and which one's inferior, so I'm scrolling down right here and this is the vessel that we're seeing, so that's going to be our inferior branch and then now I'm scrolling up and that's going to be our superior branch. So it's really just where are they, where are they pointing to, that's going to be the direction they're going. So I tried to do the left lower lobe a few times and uh, when I was looking at it before, and this is a little bit of a variant anatomy, so this is a good opportunity to show you how to find them based off of following the airways rather than just the arteries. So we see here, uh, this is our left lower lobe bronchus. So we'll see that there's kind of three branches that come off here and then this one immediately goes off and branches into two more. So what that's showing us is this is going to be our posterior branch and we see it mirrors the, the artery, so this is our posterior branch. We're going to follow that all the way to the end. And then this one right here is going to be our lateral branch. So I'm following the, the airway and I'm following the artery, that's going to be our lateral branch. And if we go back to where we started, there was one that kind of came up and then it branched off very quickly and that's going to be our anterior medial. So here's the anterior medial. This is going to be the medial segment, and so then you'll see the artery kind of follow shortly after. And then this one right here is going to be our anterior branch, and it's going anteriorly, and that's going to be the artery. So that's just a good way to, you can either follow the airways or you can follow the arteries to be able to figure out where exactly these are going. And in addition, like I was showing you before, you can also go backwards and go in the lobe and then find where the arteries are and go backwards. The last thing that I wanted to show you was, let's say you saw some abnormality here out in the periphery and then you're thinking, oh, oh, is that, is that some type of filling defect? Well, the one thing that I want you to make sure of is going backwards. So let's say you saw it back there and then you're tracking it back. Oh, but now it's going into a pulmonary vein, now into our left atrium. So that is going to be a pulmonary vein rather than a pulmonary artery. So very commonly you're going to have mixing artifact and you're going to have these filling defects within the pulmonary veins. You just have to be very sure that these are actually artifacts within the pulmonary veins rather than actually thrombus. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.